I reached into one of my recent college lectures to pull this podcast together. Have you ever wondered how we can be influenced by what we see and hear in mass media to include this particular podcast? Time to take out our pens and notebooks class. Well, maybe that's a stretch. A Micronesian look at agenda setting theory on That's It, That's All. You are listening to That's It, That's All with Sean DeMatato. You are listening to That's It, That's All. I'm Sean Gumatautau, your host of the podcast. That's It, That's All is brought to you by Get LLC, the consulting and specialty construction materials and supplies firm, serves both public and private sector organizations in Micronesia and the Western Pacific. Do you need help with writing a small business plan? Need to buy materials for your next commercial facility construction project? The answers to those questions can be explored by finding Get LLC on the World Wide Web at get-guam.com. Check them out. Hello to those listening in Dallas, Texas. Also, greetings to those of you listening in Atlanta, Georgia. The listenership is growing with each episode to include those now listening in Chikuma in the Nagano Prefecture of Japan. Can't forget the listeners across the island of Guam in the financial center of Tamuning. Half a day to you all. We appreciate that you have That's It, That's All with you on your travels from one end of Paradise Guam to the other. Remember to download the podcast ahead of your next road trip as you are getting ready for that next gym workout and as you are preparing to sit down in front of your desktop or laptop computers. A special thanks to RedCircle.com in helping push out the podcast on Spotify. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, That's It, That's All can be found on iHeartRadio and Pandora. Like, subscribe, or follow on your favorite podcast app right now. It may come as a surprise to you all, but I would say that the ideas of my students at the University of Guam are a good gauge of what is happening out in the world today. What has their interest? What are the issues that matter the most to our next generation of folks in the workforce and the future drivers of our island and our world economies? Recently, we talked up mass media and social media and a particular mass media theory that generated plenty of discussion and insightful debate that I wanted to share it with you all on this podcast. It's called Agenda Setting Theory. Developed by Maxwell E. McCombs and Donald L. Shaw in the summer of 1972, this theory was published starting with these words, quote, In our day, more than ever before, candidates go before the people through the mass media rather than in person. The information in the mass media becomes the only contact many have with politics. The pledges, promises, and rhetoric encapsulated in news stories, columns, and editorials constitute much of the information upon which a voting decision has to be made. Close quote. The work of these two journalism professors at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill would spur by 2007 more than 400 studies on this topic that would later include examinations of both election and non-election settings, covering a wide array of issues and extending beyond the U.S. across the five continents. Fourteen years ago, McCombs and Sebastian Valenzuela rebooted the work of the original UNC study and examined how it expanded across different areas of application and development. Bottom line, in 2021, agenda-setting theory still tells us that in choosing and displaying the news of the day, editors and print newsroom staff, as well as broadcasters in radio and television, play an important role in shaping political reality. It means readers, listeners, and viewers learn not only about a given issue, but also how much importance is attached to that issue from the amount of information in a news story at its position in a medium 
whether on a page, time, or location in a news broadcast. If we take today's news from the U.S. mainland and perhaps much of the rest of the world, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic would jump out as an issue priority, especially as policymakers and the president of many a nation is trying to understand how to get the public health emergency under control and deal with the setbacks that it has caused in all areas of our societies. What else, you ask? In America, the ongoing humanitarian crisis along the U.S.-Mexico border has both media and lawmakers trying to get a handle on the optics of thousands of young people making entry into the United States while balancing immigration law with enforcement actions related to human trafficking, drugs, and violence. Let me give you another issue, gun control. There has been scores of reports around the world recently where guns in the hands of citizens have been used to commit violent crimes like murder and robbery, while advocates want to keep the issue important to rights to bear arms in times of violent uprisings in democracies, where such is a basic right of its citizenry. We have three issues facing the public, the latter facing the American public for sure. The influence of media does affect the presentation of all of the reports on the pandemic, immigration, gun control, and other news that, in turn, affects the public mind. What you read, see, and hear is put together in a way that when these issues of importance to the media lead a newscast or make the front page of a publication, there is this automatic perception that these are really the important things that we all should be thinking about as a society. Agenda-setting theory has been found to take the priorities of which news comes first, and then the next are set by the media according to how people think and how much influence it will have with the audience. Before I get too carried away, a couple of criticisms of this communications theory. First, Media users are not ideal. Not sure who said that, but we have to acknowledge, and sometimes I'm guilty of this myself, people may not pay attention to all the the details in the stories that are presented to us. The next criticism is that the effect of the agenda-setting theory is weakened for people who have made up their mind on an issue or the issues. We all know those types of folks in our lives who in the face of rational thought and facts, that these types are pretty set on their thinking on many an issue. The final criticism is that media cannot create problems, or at least they have no problem saying that publicly. There is this assumption that only the media can alter the level of awareness, priorities, and importance. I have seen firsthand this final criticism paints a picture of media objectivity when the media organization fights to secure and keep advertising revenues and some media organizations not accepting responsibility for inaccurate reporting when objectivity shifts to subjectivity. This latter point touches on the notion that with so much media focus and scrutiny on single events in our respective communities that the mass media is missing or even ignoring other important stories. This is why agenda-setting theory is important for us to understand further and should remind us all how we can take in the issues of the day and what really matters to us and us alone. This podcast is sponsored by Get LLC, a consulting and specialty construction materials and supplies firm. Since 2012, they have provided valuable services to their customers across Micronesia and North America. Check them out on the World Wide Web at get-guam.com. They have a presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, too. Get LLC. Find out today how they can best serve your business's specific needs. Okay, class. The 1968 United States presidential election was a three-way face-off between vice president under Dwight Eisenhower, Richard Nixon, another vice president under Lyndon Johnson, Hubert Humphrey, 
an independent and former governor of Alabama, George Wallace. There are some political analysts that have written that the 1968 election was a tectonic shift in presidential politics that saw the end of what was called the New Deal Coalition that started back in 1932 with the election of then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt. After 36 years, the 1968 election was more than just a huge shift in American political ideology. It was how this election was won, what spurred Maxwell McCombs and Donald Shaw to find out what drove such a wedge in then modern political thought and the influences of such. The question, was there a relationship between the priority issues of the mass media and the priority issues of the public? McCombs and Shaw found that there was a nearly perfect correspondence between the two agendas. Also important, they discovered, are attitudes and opinions. We as an American community are seeing the results of such attitudes and opinions and the agendas of the people and the media being played out right before our very eyes. Case in point, the Virgin Islands Consortium reported on February 11, 2021, that U.S. Virgin Islands Delegate Stacey Plaskett was front and center during the recent impeachment of former President Donald Trump. Now, she was one of nine House Democratic impeachment managers. Speaking of what she called insurrectionists hunting down the vice president and speaker of the House for performing their duty on January 6th, this was the whole idea of the Capitol uh, raid and the like, Delegate Plaskett said, quote, President Trump put a target on their backs and his mob broke into the Capitol to hunt them down. Close quote. Now, thinking of agenda setting theory, the priority with this example and news story was the leadership of America, the attitude of Delegate Plaskett unwavering. Her opinion, an act that threatened democracy, needed a swift reaction and punishment. The narrative in Washington, D.C. is now spilling out on the streets of San Juan, Bongo Pongo, Coral Bay, Susupi, and Dedido. The political speech and coverage of it has since carried over to giving of voting rights to the U.S. territories, increased equity in American taxation policy, and support of all American workers that have been held down by a growing elite and corporate class. I would argue that agenda-setting theory shows audience members as active, even though they're influenced by what they see and hear from the work of those in the mass media. Three concepts with this theory for each of us to think about and the role of the media in our society, and they are gatekeeping, surveillance, and correlation. Gatekeeping means that powerful people in media can suppress some stories and advance others. Who are those in your community? Who are these people in your community? And what are your general thoughts about this? Well, the, for the purpose of this podcast, let me try to point out the gatekeepers in the U.S. territories. For our friends in Puerto Rico, they have the highest density of radio stations per square mile in America, 140 radio stations. The radio for almost 100 years there has been relied upon by the citizens of that U.S. territory for much of their news and information. Samoa News in American Samoa is the only print publication there, and in combination with their lone public television station, that is the one-two punch for Samoan public affairs in Tutuia. Now, the CNMI has one television news program and three newspapers that drive public interest there. In Guam, the Big Four, KUAM, the Pacific Daily News, the Guam Daily Post, and the Pacific News Center is where most of the people of the island get their news and information. Other notables across Micronesia, in the Republic of Palau, they have the Tia Bilau newspaper. And websites dot the islands across the Federated States of Micronesia and the Republic of the Marshall Islands providing news and information, well, government center for the most part, and the like. Now, taken in totality, these organizations hold the key to what is covered and what is not. 
they are all tasked with this important role in our communities. The next time you pick up a paper or newspaper or watch or listen to the news, keep this in mind. Also, keep in mind what you are consuming at that time. Remember, these gatekeepers can and have suppressed stories and advanced others since each of them were first founded. Moving on, surveillance in agenda setting theory. Now, surveillance is the process of scanning the environment and deciding which events to concentrate on in reporting the news. This is driven by the work and the drive of news directors and editors and editorial boards. These leaders listen to what is happening in our communities, and it is their decision on what makes the news and what doesn't. It carries over into how they direct their teams to gather the news. In simple terms, as a television news reporter and videographer, it's a job I did from 1991 to 2003, our teams were assigned news beats in which we looked closely at the activities and the work in areas to include uh, education, politics, or business. Not much different in print and broadcast newsrooms of varying sizes across the United States. Each day, a story is, as they say, enterprised to get a pulse of what the community is thinking about or reporters would localize stories of national interest. While each day was different, it gave reporters and newsrooms to include news directors and producers a chance to drive an agenda or lead the community to where they felt the news of the day should come from. That snapshot in time, if you will, in the history of our communities. Also, or what this also means, is that what uh, remains there is much pressure uh, from management and advertisers, at times depending on what is covered by those respective media organizations. Finally, we have correlation. In the agenda setting theory, correlation is where the media directs the public's and policymakers' attention to the same things at the same time. What does that mean to you? Attention to the same things at the same time. Editorials in local papers at times spur new legislation from those opportunistic policymakers. Outside of the COVID response, talk on Guam has been about marijuana and how it can help fund capital projects. When rules from Guam's Cannabis Control Board were presented this past week, almost two years after the legalization of recreational pot, there seemed to be this level of urgency across media outlets and policymakers surpassing even needed attention to the sagging vaccine efforts for COVID-19. News on marijuana is also taking top billing in Hawaii, New York, New Mexico, and Rhode Island, where Rhode Island policymakers are in a race to release a weed bill there. That is today, right now. Tomorrow could surely be different. Gatekeeping, surveillance, and correlation. In agenda-setting theory, three important cogs and an important link to what the media does and their impacts on consumers of the news. This podcast is sponsored by Get LLC, a consulting and specialty construction materials and supplies firm. Since 2012, they have provided valuable services to their customers across Micronesia and North America. Check them out on the World Wide Web at get-guam.com. They have a presence on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, too. Get LLC. Find out today how they can best serve your business's specific needs. My lecture continues now, class. I want to take this time to go back to the Cuadernos de Información article written by McCombs and Valenzuela back in 2007 that I referenced earlier in the podcast. The two researchers asked a very important question. Who sets the media agenda? McCombs and Valenzuela wrote that in the 1970s and 1980s, the pattern of news coverage that defined the media's agenda resulted from exchanges with sources that provide information for news stories, daily interactions among news organizations themselves, and journalism's norms and traditions. You would think that this pattern may have changed, but did it really? 
in a day and time of instant news from blogs, podcasts like this one, or the 24-hour news cycle of network and cable news, the exchanges with sources really has changed with the times. Gone are the days of the call into a hotline or newsroom phone number. Today, those phones have pretty much fell silent. In its place, a ring of a cell phone, a WhatsApp message, and or texts at all hours of the day and night are now the norm. Obviously, unless rules are set in place, negotiating when sources would be accessible from sunrise to sunset can all be very maddening, honestly. For the record, I have been on both sides of this. As a TV news reporter trying to meet 6 p.m. and eventual 10 p.m. deadlines were always foremost in my thoughts at that time. In the evolution to online in the late 1990s, going into the early 2000s, there was the initial push of the trying to be first. There was no room for being last or for sure being late. When I started in public service in around 2003, and recently exited in 2020, so much has changed with what is the daily interaction of the newsman or the newswoman. Thankfully, the work after 5 p.m. and smaller newsrooms having earlier deadlines and this want to be first has subsided out of what appears to be necessity. Just an observation now, controlling the narrative and not answering a media inquiry on a first blush is a hard contrast of agenda setting theory in 2021 as the control of the media is now at times being taken away, even for a moment in time, and the media is working so very hard to get it back. The coverage of the ongoing public health emergency with COVID-19 is a perfect example of this. Today, getting back the ability to set the agenda is resulting in larger and wider ramifications where public interest or opinion is in question more often than not. In terms of daily interactions among new media organizations or social media influencers, many are either really good at the interaction or what I'm finding really bad. There is not one source of information who wants to be front and center in the media eye each and every day. Why do you ask? Well, fatigue and empathy are a result of such interactions with the media day in and day out. Might as well hire them on your media team. I can say that corporate communications teams aren't really guilty of this too often. Though, in June of 2020, Daniel Vogler and Mark Eisenheiger wrote that by using social media, corporations can communicate about their corporate social responsibility, or what they call CSR, to the public without having to pass through the gatekeeping function of the news media. The study found, however, the extent with which corporations influence the public's evaluation of their CSR activities using social media, and if the legacy news media still act as the primary agenda setters when it comes to corporate reputation though it has not been thoroughly analyzed in a digitized media environment. Their longitudinal study found that Swiss corporations facing negative publicity were able to strengthen their reputation, but not without some help. Politicians and government agencies can get into this vicious cycle quite often. These two particular groups forget who in fact drives the agenda. Well, surely ain't them. It really still remains with the media. One more thing on agenda setting theory is the importance of attribute agenda setting. Now, this component of the theory focuses on what attributes or parts of the issues are the most important to the media, and it's trickled down to you as a consumer. How is this done? The first way is through what's called media framing. This is the way that the presentation of a story shapes a receiver's response to it. Well, I think of when I hear at least media framing, I think of objectivity. Well, in news, I and other reporters would seek out the stories and tell them from the viewer's perspective, meaning that we all assumed in our newsrooms that 
all people were watching the evening news each and every day. Very different today than back in 1991 when I started doing television news for sure. The sources, well, what we gain from a phone call or even watch or read information from our competitors or even localizing a national story or even emerging issue. It's the presentation of the images, the presentation of the facts, presentation of reality objectively. Then and only then could we, anyone really gain input on a what we'd probably call a real response. Next is priming. In agenda setting theory, this emphasizes the media's power to influence what people think, at least temporarily. An example are newspaper editorials. Do you read them? Are you swayed by their opinion? Do you listen to talk shows or podcasts? Which ones? That's it, that's all. You're subscribed to us, right? Are you driven to think differently about an issue by just listening to the talk radio or podcast host? Well, earlier this week, NBC anchor Lester Holt threw these particular questions into the stratosphere, and I want you to kind of take this all in. Fox News reported that while he was accepting an award at the 45th Murrow Symposium, Holt said, quote, I think it has become clear that fairness is overrated. The idea that we should always give two sides equal weight and merit does not reflect the world we find ourselves in. That the sun sets in the West is a fact. Any contrary view does not deserve our time or attention. Close quote. Holt added, quote, Decisions to not give unsupported arguments equal time are not a dereliction of journalistic responsibility or some kind of agenda. In fact, it's just the opposite. Close quote. I will tell you today that the media is good at what they do to help you think about so many issues. But remember, it is only for a short period of time. That is until you gain knowledge from another source and the information gets you to think about it all over again. Maybe it's a perspective that may change your worldview of an issue or change your life completely. Agenda setting theory really focuses on audience members as active, even though they're influenced by what they see and they hear in mass media. So, the next time you pick up that magazine, you see that article online from a media organization, you listen to talk radio, or you watch the evening news in your village, town, or city, please remember this particular podcast. While there may, may not be politics involved, but there is an issue of interest to you, the agenda-setting theory should remind you to keep all the information you gain in perspective, most especially where you get it from. Class dismissed. That's it. That's all. If you enjoyed this podcast, download, press subscribe, or follow us right now. More great content is on the way. Talk to you soon. The That's It, That's All podcast is produced by Sean Gamatato. Executive producer is Trisha Gamatato. Hit the subscribe or follow button and leave a review. Thanks for listening.